Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can connect your Swift UI application with core data. Now, a couple of things to notice over here is that core data, the one that I'm using, I already have inserted a few elements inside the core data, which means that, or through core data, I would say. So core data is using SQLite and SQLite database already has three or four maybe different orders already added into uh, the database. So we're just going to try to pull it and display it on the screen. The first thing is that if you create a new project and single view application, make sure that you select use core data and obviously use Swift UI. So please make sure that you do select use core data. If you don't select use core data, a lot of code that has been added to us by Xcode, which is in App Delegate which is all of this, you are not going to get anything and then, well, you'll have to start from scratch. The other thing is that I am using the latest beta version of Xcode, which is Xcode version 11, beta 5. And finally, when you do add or do check mark that use core data, it's automatically going to add a model file for you. You can see the model file over here that I am using it contains the name and the type. I've already added that. And the entity name that I have given is order. So you can actually add the entity right at the bottom. There's a button, add entity. It will add an entity, simply rename it to order and add these two attributes, which is name and type, and that's it. Now let's get started. The first thing is that, how do we access core data? How do we connect to core data? Well, all the code to connect to the core data is actually, or the manage object context is already in the app delegate. So we just need to access it from here. In order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new file and I will call it a core data manager. The core data manager will be responsible for talking to the core data and performing different actions through core data. You can call this file anything you want. I'm simply calling it core data manager. I'm gonna go ahead and import core data. Obviously, we'll have to use that and create core data manager class. Now, I will, I will be sharing the manage object contacts and the core data manager, so I will create a singleton object for this. So this will require me to create a static let shared property and I will initialize it with core data manager. But we don't even have an initializer, so maybe we should work on that first. I'm gonna create a property called MOC, which stands for Manage Object Context. It will be of type NS Manage Object Context. And now I'm gonna create a private constructor or an initializer and pass in this particular property. So NS Manage Object Context and simply set that property. So self.moc equals to MOC. The question is that where are we getting this Manage Object Context? Well, we're getting this manage object context from the app delegate because app delegate already has something called persistent container that has one of the properties which contains the manage object context. And with using the manage object context, we can use the uh, core data to persist information into our database and, and fetch the information and so on. I've also added an extension, which is called, which is on NS Manage Object Context, which allows you to get the app delegate, and then it allows you to get the current Manage Object Context. Well, that's the only Manage Object Context that we have. So let's go back to our Core Data Manager, and I'm gonna create a new property, Core Data Manager, and I'm gonna pass in the Manage Object Context that I will receive from NS manage object context dot current. Great. So this is going to initialize us the core data manager shared instance. Now we need to fetch all the stuff from the core data. So we can actually go ahead and create a function called get all orders, which is going to return you an array of order. Now, if you're wondering, hold on a second, where do we did get this class, by the way, the order class? Well, when you selected use core data, when you were creating a project, 
it created the hot coffee app which is the name of the app model for us i added a new entity by pressing the add entity button rename it to order and then i added these two attributes if you go and select the entity and select the right pane you will see that if you select the entity over here you will see that the code generation option is set to class definition which means that when you set the entity when you add the entity in core data it is automatically going to create class for you so that's the order class that you're looking at in the core data manager this one all right so now we can actually go ahead and say orders which will be initialized to empty order great we can create a request we can say order request equals to ns fetch request for the order actually this should be the type so let's go ahead and make it a type equals to order dot fetch request since we haven't really added any predicate for the request this means that we are trying to get just all the orders inside over here in this try catch block we're going to say self dot manage object context dot fetch and we are going to fetch the order request great and we also have to add the catch so let's go ahead and add the catch we're not really going to do anything in the catch anyways but we are simply going to say ns error and then print out the error great let's go ahead and save it we also have to return it so don't forget to return the orders obviously so orders great not sure why it's complaining it should be fine over here now there we go all right so now the question is that this is returning you orders should i just call the core data manager in my content view or any view and get all the orders and display it not really that's not really a good idea these are your objects these are your domain objects you shouldn't expose this onto the screen so this is a time for you to start creating your view models so i'm going to go ahead and add a new view model and i can call this order list view model order list view model great now order list view model will be responsible for giving you the view model which can be displayed on the screen so first of all i'm going to go ahead and import swift ui i'm going to also import a couple of different things so import combine also all right and now we can actually go ahead and create a class for order list view model and make it an observable object now observable object is a new uh, class that they or the new uh, thing that they added in the xcode 11 beta 5 and this is more of a replacement for bindable object and if you want to do a will change or did change if you remember that you don't have to do will change did change you just have to create a property whatever property you want to create in this case it is order and that's not good you shouldn't be putting an order over here so you should put a view model over here if you want to return we don't have a view model so let me go ahead and copy a view model it will be a very basic simple view model it's an order view model which has a name and a type type is basically the type of the coffee and name is the name on the order like john or mary or whatever the order view model has an initializer which does take an order and populate these properties so now we can go back to our order list view model and use the order view model and if i want to notify the subscribers whenever this particular property changes i can simply go ahead and decorate it with published which means that if this is published all the subscribers are going to get notified and we can redraw the interface in which means that we are going to create an initializer and let's go ahead and create another function which is fetch all orders which self dot orders equals to core data manager dot shared dot get all orders dot map and we can map it to order view model dot init 
which basically means that this is going to return you all the orders like domain objects and we're going to simply pass it to the initializer for the order view model we will get a uh, array of order view model and set the orders when the orders are set they are already marked with published this means the subscribers are going to get a notification that the orders has changed so they will read or draw their interface and in the initializer i'm just going to call fetch all orders so when we create our order list view model we will fetch all the orders at that particular moment so all the things are done from a core data manager point of view and also the uh, the view model point of view but we haven't figured out what to do in our content view so let's get started the first thing i'm going to do over here is i'm going to go ahead and create a property called observed object which is a new thing which is a replacement for a bind uh, object binding var order list view model and you can initialize it over here i'm just going to say order list view model over here and initialize it in the constructor but I guess you can initialize it uh, above there also. Self dot order list view model equals to order list view model. And if you remember, inside the order, not order model, order list view model, and make sure that we are using order list view model. There we go. And if you remember that inside the order list view model, when you initialize it, it automatically going to fire the fetch orders and it's going to get all the orders from the core data manager or the core uh, using core data and it's going to assign it to the orders and then when you assign to the orders since the order is decorated with published it is going to publish an event to all the subscribers telling them that you better refresh your view uh, so that you can display new orders okay great so now the only part that is remaining is that we should just go through the orders and display it okay so we're going to go ahead and create a list for each and self dot order list vm dot orders. The other thing that you might be noticing is that I don't really have an Xcode preview on the right hand side because I am running on Catalina beta four at this particular moment. That is the latest version that is available. And if you're using Xcode 11 beta five with Catalina beta four, you will not get the Xcode previews. Hopefully that will be fixed in the later release, but that's fine, we'll simply run it in a simulator. Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and display our order. So I'm gonna just display this text.name, because that's the name of our order. And uh, that's hopefully is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we are able to pick the orders from our SQLite database through core data and then display it on the screen. And you can see that there are two orders, both are from John and they are actually being displayed on the screen. Let's actually go back and add a couple of different things more, maybe make it a little bit nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to replace all of this portion with a horizontal stack. It's just a UI stuff, you don't have to worry about that. And let's go ahead and run it again so we can see the image of the order and also the name of on the order, which in this case is John. And he ordered the same exact coffee. So there you have it. This is how you can integrate your Swift UI application with Core Data. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my course Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a seven hour plus course, and you can see it's the highest rated course on Udemy with 600 plus students enrolled. This course is going to take you with everything you need to know about creating amazing Swift UI applications. It's gonna start with creating and combining views, jumping into list and navigation, understanding state and binding, and even the NVVM design pattern, which is very, very important if you want to create any Swift UI application. Later on, it jumps into gestures, property wrappers, forms, models, and so much more. And I keep on adding new content as, as soon as I learn new, some new stuff. Now you have already learned about core data, right? Just fetching the information from the core data. Well, this course actually takes you more into core data. As you can see, there are many different sections, the whole section associated with core data, 
which will show you how you can set up core data, implementing core data manager, saving, fetching, displaying, persisting, and presenting and deleting. So much information that you can learn from this course. Now, the best way to get this course, there's already a link in your YouTube description. Simply click on the link and you will get the course with the best price available. And if you do use the link, it is going to allow you not only to get you the best price, but it will allow me to take in like maybe 90% of the cut. So that's to be really honest, I mean, use the link that is for you and it will really help me. That's the best price, the lowest price you can get using my link that I've already added in the description, in the YouTube description. And check out some other courses. You might be interested in blockchain. You might be interested in the augmented reality or machine learning or MVVM. That's another course, really good course to supplement your knowledge. So check out some other courses. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.